Good Wednesday afternoon. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather and your latest weather yield outlook. Hey, listen, the topic today is increased severe weather threats with a pattern becoming very favorable for several clusters of damaging thunderstorms, heavy wind, heavy rain, vivid lightning, you name it. This is the area we're targeting for the increased threats of severe weather as we close out June. And beyond that, we bring in another heat wave to start July. We're going to talk about all of that today and uh, and more in our latest weather yield outlook here. Someone had said something to me last week. They were saying, hey, if you have uh, bourbon in the background, you should just uh, share it and drink it. Well, this one's special because it was made for me. It says Bam WX to the moon. Um, so I'm going to crack this open when we hit a certain milestone here in, in revenue, which we're working on very hard right now. Um, and when that happens, I'll drink it with all of you. Okay, so let's get into the latest today again. Uh, share this with a friend, tag a friend, post it to your page. Heat waves to continue into July. Flash dryness the last two weeks. It's gotten very dry, especially across the east. Storm, crust, uh, storm cluster risks increasing. And we're watching for major heat, uh, major heat into July with storms as well. And we're going to talk about our latest yield outlooks as well uh, going forward. So Let's take a look here at the latest. We've got heat right now, and it is record heat, by the way. Anywhere you see these little squares, that's a symbol for uh, we believe we're breaking the record high temperatures. The Northeast is roasting today. We get a lot of heat. Uh, people talking to us on Twitter like, um, oh, you know, it's, it's June. It always gets hot. It's summer. It always gets hot. Yeah, well, we're talking about temperature departures from normal. <clears throat> so here's a little news flash. If you don't know what you're talking about, you probably shouldn't talk about it, right? Those are something we should probably, you know, we should probably educate ourselves on things before we just speak uh, uh, and, and, and just pretend like we know, because it is record heat. And we're going back the last 132 years to, to uh, break these records. These are records for tomorrow, by the way, uh, stretching into Kentucky, portions of Tennessee records here, uh, high temperature forecast with the, with the square boxes. We're going to go now into Friday. Ohio, Kentucky, look at that, Louisville record high, 98 degrees, uh, 97 there, eastern Kentucky. Getting into Saturday, Illinois, 96 degrees, Chicago, 97, southern Michigan, 94. Uh, records creeping in now to Mississippi, Alabama as well. Look at that over there in California, temperatures in the 100s. Yes, by the way, that is records. It's not normal, everyday, June 22nd, heat, okay? Records continue, Louisiana, uh, down through uh, uh, portions of far eastern Tennessee and still into the northeast as this nasty heat ridge is sprawled out across the south central U.S. It's hot. Temperatures are in the 90s. Looking out to next Monday, we're still seeing some record heat, but intense heat nonetheless. For June 24th, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, triple digit heat for high temperatures there. We've gone very dry recently the last couple of weeks, especially across portions of Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Southern Illinois, and out through portions of Central uh, Kansas and Oklahoma. Okay, this is on the Clarity platform showing the soil moisture percentile index. Um, and, and you can see how dry it's gotten. And it's also gotten extraordinarily wet across North Dakota and Minnesota, much of Minnesota. In, fa in fact, the total change to Minnesota, Iowa there in the last couple of weeks. We look at rainfall the last seven days. Again, for the most part, it's been rather non-existent for portions of Michigan, East Iowa, down through uh, Oklahoma, Kansas. And again, uh, you know, most of the eastern grain belt really has not seen much in the way of rain. If you've got the red outline, you've had more than two inches of rain here in the last seven days with a high concentration of it there in eastern Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa. You go out here to the last 14 days, if your red line is there, you've had four inches or more of rain. Uh, but again, the last 14 days, a lot of us here have really not had much rain at all, uh, okay, uh, especially east, east Iowa, Illinois, portions of Indiana, Ohio there, with the exception of some isolated heavier rain there, and then across central Oklahoma, southern Kansas, it's gotten dry there quickly. With the heat, with the high temperatures in the low 90s uh, and breezy conditions, the soils are drying out pretty quickly. So, what does it look like for rainfall the next 10 days? Well, glad you asked. We got the latest model data here that we're siding with. This is the next five days. So between now and Monday morning, June 24th, 
Heaviest rain will fall across South Dakota, southern Minnesota, northern and eastern Iowa. They need the rain in eastern Iowa, portions of Wisconsin. Where you see the lack thereof with the rainfall, that's where the uh, center of the heat dome is located. This is a big sprawled out area of high pressure. I talked about this last week and the potential of it being located here and the storms going up and around with the southwest flow. As the ridge starts to depart and go southwest, the flow will go from southwest aloft to northwest flow aloft, and you'll get a precip forecast that looks like this in the 5 to 10 day. It's very wet in areas that have been dry. And overall, you know, listen, I've seen patterns like this for the last decade show up in late June and July. When they show up on the models, it normally starts raining. Okay, so we always get into this time where Indianapolis, you know, the Eastern Corn Belt, the Indianapolis, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio starts out with this record hot and dry stretch in June, and everyone thinks we're going to get into a big drought. Um, while I'm not forecasting a major drought, I am forecasting the continuation of storm complexes and significant heat being possible. This is the five to 10 day rainfall forecast. And a lot of this could come in the form of strong storm clusters and maybe even possibly a derecho or two. I'm going to show you the charts for next week and just how much energy some of the morning model data is, is projecting with the significant thermal gradient, the major heat. It's possible we might look at a derecho or two. Uh, the major heat, these 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 patterns favor these types of storm clusters. Um, we are we are in a pattern that will be conducive for this. 98, 2012, 2016, 2022, all featured a uh, big derecho events, MCS storm clusters. And what we did is we basically took the last ten summer Midwest and Ohio Valley derecho events and we we analogued it. We made a plot for it. Talked about this last week in the late in the last episode of Weather Yield. The uh, the 591 heights centered here across the south, a trough up here to the north and west. This is the 7 to 12 day pattern based on the latest European ensemble. Here is the 591 heights. Here is your trough across the north and west. The pattern for the most part is about a 95% match. I really don't know how it could match any more than it than it does right now, analog versus the model. OK, and we're already starting to see the flow pattern indicate potential for severe storm clusters to develop. This is the earliest one, which would be next Monday evening, uh, June 24th. And uh, you're watching here. Here's 591. So we're going to look at that 588 height line. It's right there in this particular instance. And you start to get little pieces of energy that flow around that and thunderstorm clusters can develop. And the reason I, I'm interested in next Monday evening is because the CAPE next Monday evening, the energy, uh, the available potential energy in the atmosphere is off the charts. Uh, normally when you see a big epicenter of very, very high CAPE values somewhere in south central Iowa, uh, you normally get a pretty nasty cluster of thunderstorms to ride the periphery of this gradient the, 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 along the edge of it. And you can see what this one would suggest at this distance, something like this, potentially suggesting a, a southeastward diving cluster of thunderstorms next Monday night. That's the first one. And then Tuesday afternoon and evening, another cluster of thunderstorms possible in the east, Indiana, Michigan. There's the disturbance right there along the 588 height line. And you can see the Cape gradient there Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, suggesting, uh, again, Cape levels over 5,000. And you, you start to see these gradients show up with flow aloft, and it's possible yet another damaging cluster of thunderstorms will show up and present issues with wind and heavy rain and a lot of lightning and hail. All right, then there's another one uh, next Wednesday, the 26th. That may be a, a residual Tuesday night, Wednesday morning type uh, signal here. But you can see what's happened in the model data. The ridge was over here, okay? It's where it is right now. That's why the heat's the most intense right here. In this image here, by hour 165, which is basically day seven, the ridge is now over here. So as it as it goes from being expansive to contracting and retrograding, which is what we call moving west, the flow around the top, because of the trough here, uh, opens up a flow for Pacific moisture, 
okay? And the ridge to allow energy to come up over the top and present thunderstorm clusters. It's classic. It's, it's just kind of textbook uh, signal there for that to occur. Even out to day nine, which is the 27th of June, another indication of a active uh, uh, piece of energy, or active flow pattern, bringing the potential for storm clusters. And then even into day nine and a half, there's another one across Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, which is again, once again, in the five to 10. That's why I like the favored rainfall forecast. It's wet. And I think it will be. I think there's going to be several clusters of storms. Now, wet, sure. Uh, but that could come with damaging wind gusts, a lot of heavy rain in a short amount of time, and potentially hail as well. All right, so something to keep in mind. We're going to look at now the next uh, heat wave, because there's going to be another one after this one. Uh, after the northwest flow pattern comes through, the, the ridge will start to come back. It'll start to expand. This is the European Ensemble uh, machine learning, uh, European Ensemble. You can see the 597 uh, heat ridge expanding back as early as July 3rd. So just in time for the holiday, probably some nasty heat around the area. Uh, the, if you take the, the grain belt and you kind of look at it in this regard here, it's safe to say the, the southern half of the grain belt going to be dealing with significant heat uh, as we get into the first week of July based on the latest data. What this will do for a time is probably nudge the storm cluster risk north as well. You see that 588 to 591 height line those storm clusters may go a little bit further north for a time as the ridge starts to expand again and the heat makes a comeback. This is by hour 282, which is the morning of June 30th. You can see the ensemble probability for a 594 decameter ridge. That's essentially going to promote heat that's 100 degrees or hotter. The probability right now at 70% or greater for the center of that ridge to be located over Louisiana. Okay, see no reason to disagree with that right now. That's going to put the core of the warmest temperatures from normal right back over the eastern belt, stretching through the central part of the country with a favor in the mid-Atlantic and possibly coming back west. We could say we repeat this current setup. The ridge starts east, it retrogrades west, it gets very hot, and then more storms come in. So second week of July, northwest flow pattern is back and nasty storm clusters are back into the picture. Okay. In the 5 to 10 uh, over the next two weeks, possibly cooler across the top because the ridge does pull back and go west. But as it starts to expand again in the 10 to 15, everybody gets hot once again as we get into the first five days of July. And by the way, in July, when you are 10 degrees above normal for a five-day period, that's very hot. It's not the normal run-of-the-mill summertime heat that all of these know-it-alls on Twitter uh, say that it is, right? Uh, you have to love those folks. The next 15 days, I really like the Europeans machine learning forecast for precip. Because of the flow pattern, I can see rain and pro potentially more than normal rain uh, falling here. A lot of this is going to fall in week one right here, by the way. But the flow pattern indicates the ridge is going to move to the west. It dries in here. As the ridge propagates west, there's a tropical system down here in the, in the Gulf that will impact the, Mexico, a lot of that coming from there. And then the flow around the ridge will bring moisture into the southwest there, but probably keep a lot of the deep south dry the next 15 days. The 16 to 30 day pattern, what does it look like? Well, another crash in the angular momentum is targeted here. Uh, to go pretty negative, uh, you know, to reach a low, if you will, a new low around minus two around June 20th or June 21st. Uh, we like to correlate big heat about three weeks out from that. Um, it's, it's, already, it's already surfacing and showing up uh, in the data um, with the return of the ridge by as early as July you know, 1st, July 2nd, July 3rd. But we're going extremely above normal, significant heat signals here the 2nd through the 15th of July. 198 on the CDD forecast for the country, much warmer than the 30-year normal. We're going to keep the flow pattern active here across the top. It'll be much below normal in here. The ridge will probably retrograde. The heat will probably follow. And the flow pattern opens up for storm clusters and risks back here. Okay? And the heat will go west into Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas for a time. You know, the four corner regions even of the U.S. possibly. Okay? flow over the top. Maybe there's a mid-July cool down as the ridge pulls back uh, for a time. But right now, all indications are 
Uh, Pacific pattern saying July is hot. It's probably very hot. It's probably one of the hottest Julys we've ever seen in terms of uh, a national perspective and an energy demand perspective from the entire country. Okay. A quick update on Enzo. Well, we're continuing to see indications of a warming eastern Pacific here. Uh, the the water's continuing to get very warm. Why does that uh, Why does that interest me? Well, I think the pattern is ridge, trough, ridge, trough, uh, high pressure, and heat dome. Uh, kind of encouraging that look there uh, to continue to be of concern. The ridge will waffle back and forth. But overall, the Pacific Ocean water temperatures are basically confirming to me we're going to continue to deal with significant bouts of heat this summer. The July forecast, we have not really changed it. If anything, the temperature forecast, uh, we could be looking at possibly making the, uh, the red here a little bit more expansive, perhaps, to include more of an, of an area. Uh, this map was made back on June 5th by myself and Brett, uh, and it wouldn't shock me if we're closer to 400 CDDs for the month. Regardless, it's, we're forecasting probably record warm July with a lot of heat. Okay, The precipitation forecast, again, I, I noted this in the outlook back on June 5th, uh, that this forecast will come with the risk of the haves and the have-nots. And what that means is, is, you may get some really good thunderstorm cluster activity uh, right through, you know, right through here. Maybe some good rain, but the rain might miss here, and it might hit down in here, and it might miss over there. And it, it's it's wherever these storm clusters go, regardless in this area in the black dashed line, you run the risk at storm cluster potential. The moisture can be beneficial there, but it's not. It may not be widespread. Now I will tell you, based on what I'm seeing. With the June pattern of the ridge being east, retrograding, contracting, going west, flow pattern comes over top. Then the ridge comes back. I think if it does that again, there's a couple of very wet periods that will come as that happens. So I'm not forecasting, I don't think, a, a, an ex, a continuation of any type of significant periods or long extended periods of no rain. As long as the ridge is moving and it doesn't just stop. There will be precipitation that flows around the periphery of the ridge. The problem is going to continue to be, when you're talking from a yield perspective, is the hot temperatures, the lack of widespread consistent moisture and warm overnight lows, and the moisture that we do get possibly coming in the form of severe weather. Those are the four risks we've ran for the last 45 days here on the Weather Yield Show, uh, and which continues to indicate, we believe, a below-trend corn yield for this year based on those particular four data sets. Um, no reason to change that right now. We continue to believe that it's not going to be the perfect year for corn. Again, because I do have concerns that this particular feature as we get further into August may have a tendency to go north late July into August and sprawl out here. If that happens, you're not going to get flow pattern precip in the corn belt. You're going to get heat and you're going to get expanded uh, dryness. And that's always been a risk in our summer forecast package. Um, with that said, we're also right at to below trend on the yields for soybeans. So that's my latest uh, weather yield this week. Share it with a friend, tag a friend, and uh, we'll see you right back here. Make sure to hit that subscribe button here to the YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.